Hello everyone. Welcome to deploying. Welcome, welcome to the DTC Asia webinar on title "Deploying Drones for Efficiency, Safety, and Sustainability." Uh, ARC does this uh, Asia webinars under the banner of Digital Transformation Council. Digital Transformation Council is the place to connect, collaborate, learn, and share with peers who are digitizing and transforming their organization. Organization. This is only DTC end user community. Okay. Uh, myself, uh, Ganapit Raman, Vice President and uh, General Manager, ARC Advisory Group India. This DTC will go for about uh, 60 minutes. The topic introduction will be done by Bob Will, General Manager, Southeast Asia Air Service Group. He is based out of Singapore. We have guest speakers from Petronas, Malaysia, Mohammed Kamil, Mohammed Arshad, Principal Engineer, Instrument and Controls, Shukar Mahat, Principal Process Safety, Petronas, then Hosei Hafiz, Manager, Drone Center, Petronas. After the guest speakers make the presentations, there will be a panel discussion between Bob Gill and the Petrona speakers. After the panel discussions are concluded successfully, it will be open for audience Q&A. And the entire duration of this DTC webinar will be 60 minutes. The, all, we request all the delegates who have queries after the presentation done by Petrona's team in the Q&A or chat box. We will won't be allowing, we won't be unmuting the speakers to speak live. So please put the questions in Q&A in chat box. And now I introduce you to my colleague, Bob Gill, General Manager, Southeast Asia, Air Service Group uh, from Singapore. I request him to do the topic introduction for this yeah. webinar. Over to you, Bob. All right, okay, thank you. Thank you, Raman. And let me extend my own welcome to you all for this first DTC Asia event of 2023. Uh, those of you who are familiar with ARC Advisory Group, we know that we produce a large number of market research reports every year, analyzing technology developments in areas including industrial automation, industrial software, energy, supply chain, smart cities. A newer area of ARC research is drones and a very active and promising sector for drone technology suppliers is drones for the process industries which is actually the title of one of our recently published reports. This market is already estimated to be worth over 400 million US dollars and is growing in double digits. And interestingly, the largest market in terms of geographic region is right here, it's Asia Pacific. So what's driving that growth? Well, a number of factors. Uh, one factor is companies striving for efficiency through time and cost savings, replacing labor saving inspections and avoiding the need to use costly equipment at height, things like scaffolding, lifts, um, helicopters, and even, even, even planes. Another factor is the growing emphasis on worker safety, using drones to replace operators previously required to be deployed in hazardous areas or to, to, to work in difficult conditions. And something that we saw amplified by COVID-19, when you remember workers were not even able to get out to sites in many cases, uh, is the trend towards remote operations for which drones are really an ideal enabler. Drone technology itself is also advancing, more sophisticated sensors and cameras, autonomous navigation and automated data collection, reporting and analysis. Of course, there are challenges to different regulations in different jurisdictions, um, regulations in many countries being out of sync with the pace of advancing drone technology. So today, to add some real life perspectives and color to our ARC research, we are going to be hearing from one of the leading proponents of drone technology applications in the process industries in this region, and that is Malaysian national oil and gas company, Petronas. 
So from here in the ARC office in downtown Singapore, let's go right up to the Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, to hear from Patronus all about deploying drones for efficiency, safety and sustainability. And let me welcome the first of our three speakers from Patronus, and he's uh, Jose Hafiz, Manager Drone Centre. So Jose, uh, let me hand over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose from Petronas Drone Center. Uh, firstly, uh, I'd like to thank uh, ARC Advisory Group for uh, inviting us uh, for this webinar. Um, here with me, uh, I have uh, two of my colleagues, uh, Mr. Kamil and Mr. Shuko. So we'll be sharing uh, with you about uh, how we use drones, a little bit uh, some of the use cases that we use uh, drones in Petronas. Let me share my screen. Right. Okay. Um, is it okay? Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, before we start, we, uh, I would like to uh, do a little bit of introduction of uh, Petronas. We are the Malaysian oil and gas company. Uh, we are a global, also a global energy group with presence in over fifty countries. So our operations range from uh, down uh, from upstream in exploration, development, and production, all the way to the retail sector, agri agricultural sector, and commercial sectors uh, downstream. So uh, we, are, we have uh, integrated operations all across the value chain uh, of the hydrocarbon, and we're also extending to the um, renewable energies sectors. So um, today, um, our sharing on drone use cases will be in our uh, domestic uh, operations, uh, which in Malaysia covers uh, both East and West Malaysia. We have uh, assets uh, from uh, offshore platforms, uh, gas pipelines, uh, uh, processing plants, uh, petrochemical refinery, and gas processing uh, and LNG units. So um, in the operation of these assets, uh, we can use drones in uh, quite a few use cases. Um, one of it is uh, inspection, which is the main one. Uh, we do uh, use drones to access uh, high uh, areas where normally we, we need to use uh, scaffoldings or rope access. So uh, with drones, we can do away with that and uh, do the inspection faster and safer. Uh, we do thermal monitoring, uh, corrosion inspection, and also drones for uh, internal vessels. Uh, that we uh, can use uh, small drones to access uh, uh, confined spaces where there are risk uh, if uh, we send humans in. The next one is surveillance, uh, that we can use drone for aerial surveillance for security uh, to patrol our perimeter uh, using drones for uh, our pipeline right of way, where we have over 2,600 kilometers of pipelines. So uh, we can use uh, drones instead of uh, uh, helicopters to do the, the surveillance and monitoring of our pipeline right of, right of way. Uh, for projects also, uh, we do project progress monitoring uh, using drones uh, and also health and safety where during the, um, the pandemic, uh, we use uh, uh, drones to, to monitor uh, the use of uh, PPE, masks, um, social dist uh, the uh, distancing between uh, people uh, and ensure that uh, the operations uh, and maintenance are conducted in uh, the proper manner. And also we do mapping. Uh, we can do um, uh, well, the laser mapping using LiDAR, uh, photogrammetry, 3D photo photogrammetry, and also using multispectral uh, sensors to, to uh, detect uh, and map various uh, types of uh, uh, terrain 
and also the the vegetation the soil uh, also the uh, the existing uh, of water in the uh, in the in the environment okay and then also there are emerging use cases where things are still currently being uh, explored and uh, at the uh, trial stage proof of concept uh, the first one being uh, delivery or, or logistics where currently we are um, trying to uh, deliver items between offshore platforms so where currently if you want to uh, send uh, items between pl platforms uh, we need to use boats uh, where you know a, a big vessel a standby vessel or a fast crew boat uh, to send uh, items between platforms so Using drones is much safer, much uh, more efficient, and also uh, a much less carbon footprint. Next one is for uh, long-range aerial surveillance. Like I said, uh, we have uh, uh, thousands of kilometers of pipelines that uh, we need to monitor and survey to ensure there's no um, uh, threat uh, intrusions or any um, uh, soil movement that could, uh, could affect the, the integrity of the pipeline. So uh, with long range drones, we can replace uh, the use of helicopters that we use uh, to, to survey this, uh, our pipeline right, right of way. And also for security, uh, as uh, we do have some uh, security threat at our, our offshore platforms. Oh, sorry. Um, so we can use drones to do uh, offshore uh, patrolling instead of using uh, boats or you know, manned aircraft. So this is much uh, more efficient and uh, cost-effective. Next one is nested drones or some uh, call it drone in a box. These drones can be stationed at a remote area uh, and operated remotely. And theoretically, it can be operated from anywhere in the world. You just need an internet connection. So you can uh, launch the drone remotely and the drone can do uh, the, the surveillance or the collection of data uh, all um, when the operator is sitting in an office somewhere. So this is also um, a much uh, more efficient and safe way to, uh, to do surveillance or to do uh, detection uh, and uh, patrolling uh, remotely. Okay, uh, I think um, for now this is uh, uh, in general, what we use, uh, uh, my colleague uh, Kamil will, will share with you uh, the first use case. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Before that, uh, I just want to uh, tell you why uh, we use drones. Uh, so basically, uh, as our our webinar title is, uh, there's three main uh, advantages of using drone technology: safety, efficiency, and sustainability. Sustainability. So drones, as um, mentioned just now, we can uh, send the drones uh, to hazardous areas where uh, it's uh, safer uh, for the operator to be uh, op operating it uh, from a remote area uh, and efficiency uh, in, in, uh, instead of like uh, erecting scaffoldings or doing uh, rope access, uh, we can just launch a drone and get the, the visuals, the, the data that we need from uh, the inspection. And also for sustainability, uh, the carbon footprint of the drones uh, is much less uh, since it, it can replace the use of uh, boats, big uh, offshore vessels, and also helicopters. So it can uh, reduce our carbon footprint significantly. Okay, so uh, I, I hand over to uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Kamil, for the first uh, use case for um, uh, drones use in Petronas. Over to you, Kamil. Um, okay, so Everyone can hear me well. Okay, so um, I'll continue. So the the um, the first use case uh, that we want to share today is on the uh, methane emissions uh, monitoring. Or so um, Petronas uh, as a as a corporation, we target net zero carbon emissions by twenty fifty. 
right? So um, you can see that our targets, uh, for example, in 2024, and it's um, uh, 49.5 metric tons of CO2 equivalent. This is the, we want to cap our emissions. And out of that, 50% of that is actually, we want to reduce our emission emissions. So, um, and, and we go around, we, as we go on to 2050, then is further reductions um, uh, up to 70 and up to 50% of plant. Level five is site level measurement, which is uh, the overall of the plant. So there are different technologies available for, uh, for level four and level five, but specific for our topic today, um, you can see at level five, at the second um, a box there in the middle, you can see that using drone or, or plane based uh, with uh, methane sensors uh, fitted on the drone. Uh, using two types of technology, uh, normally is LIDAR or TDLS, Tunable Diode Laser Absorption uh, Spectroscopy, right? So both of these algorithms, uh, both of these technology requires algorithm to actually quantify the methane emissions. So um, we, we, we did a proof of concept actually uh, on three types of facilities that we have, our pipelines, uh, our downstream facilities, uh, uh, for example, refinery, and also our offshore facilities upstream uh, on, our, on, on our platforms, right? Okay, and um, what we did, uh, what we found out that um, when we did the survey that the drones with the methane sensors is available, is uh, available to measure the methane readings and constant, it was a consistent readings that was, was found throughout the test. For example, you can see in that in that picture above, it's actually um, the, the, the concentration reading superimposed on the uh, on on the location uh, view of the location itself. So you can see the the, the where the concentration is uh, on in the yellow box. And you and when we verify that uh, actually what is there at site. And you can see that it is correct that those locations are where we have the vents for the for the pipelines, right? So the quantification is 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 um, is, uh, is is consistent, uh, but the algorithm requires uh, uh, accurate and uh, timely records of wind speed, right? Because the the sensor only looks uh, reports concentration, but uh, we need wind speed to actually calculate the uh, need the, the the flow rate of the leak at the leak source, right? So the wind speed is actually measured as well during this exercise. Okay, um, next. Okay, so when we go to offshore facilities, so our platforms uh, or, or uh, our, our platforms or our terminals offshores, so we can see that it is, um, it is uh, a bit different because uh, we can detect the emission, the emission, emission but uh, it is unable to pinpoint the source. It's only able to roughly estimate the area where the source is coming from. Eh? Because um, there, there's a limitation of the, the methane uh, sensor because when you have, a, uh, when it's looking over water, so it, it limits the sensor to actually detect the methane concentration because of the water absorption of the IR energy. So we can see some areas which are, which are um, uh, uh, determined as the source and, and uh, again, when we check, it is it is uh, generally is correct. There's a heat exchanger at that point, and uh, for example, there's a gas chromatography venting at another point. But uh, the the area is a bit more um, uh, wider than previously when you have it on uh, an onshore location. Right? And again, wind speed is an important factor to get the accurate uh, quantification here. Next, okay. So and. Uh, so we go to use case number two, which is uh, using drones for virtual fencing and encroachment detection, actually as a combination of drones to, de to detect uh, intruder. So this is a, um, our, 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 um, our pipeline. Go, uh, so the pipeline right away is, is uh, along these lines. So you can see that um, um, if you have a point number one, you can see uh, if somebody, somebody is digging there, unauthorized digging, so there's a fiber optic along the pipeline. We, we, we can detect the location of this, um, of this uh, unauthorized uh, activity, right? Because uh, from the fiber optic sensing, and then we send it, this information to the drone. So this is a nested drone, uh, the drone in the box. So the drone will, will uh, get the information and automatically fly over to that location and uh, actually, and, and actually uh, provide some warning or alarms to the intruder, okay? 
So this is in theory of the, the concept of this. Next. Okay. So um yeah, okay, next. All right. So um you these are some pictures of of uh of uh from from the drone camera itself. If you look at the top left, so that's you can see that the drone the the green the green area there highlighted green with the red boundary that is the uh, pipeline right of way the red is the boundary of the of the drone uh, flight path so it will fly straight to the location of the uh, intruder and you go to the to the to the second picture on the right you can see that it's, it's still is moving towards the direction and the third picture uh, bottom right then it, it arrives at the location and it sees a um, you can see a small guy there with a white white hat actually so he's he's the intruder uh, in this uh, the actor in this case and we give an alarm to him and he, he actually runs away and then the drone flies back to the um, to its nest which is sitting which is on top of the of the of our uh, of our building there so and it goes back into the nest so that's that's the that's the trial that we have so this drone can actually fly uh, to a maximum of uh, eight kilometers uh, one way so that means a total of 16 kilometers uh, journey plus the return trip so that's the maximum distance it can go right so we we, we put this at locations where we find there are numerous intrusions to the pipeline right away and then we can actually prevent this All right okay so i pass to my other colleague uh, shuko to describe on the third use case Thank you, Mr. Kamel. Uh, it's now my turn to share the use case number three, how we are going to inspect and do some surveillance on the using a drone. <laughs> okay. A drone in the process area, normally what we did at this moment is uh, for the monitoring or the example here, inspection of the flare system on the flat tips and also in some cases we conduct some confined space in the elevated air, air elevated area and also we conduct some in the uh, some visual on on the equipment at the elevated area and and in the some cases also we we perform some gas leak detection visually uh, uh on the equipment especially on the distillation columns or on the pipe rack all right on the surveillance of the uh using a drone uh, we form for the security system like uh, like example like my my colleague mentioned about the drone in the box and as well as uh, that small picture desk we conduct some uh, safety monitoring during our turnaround of our venting system All right thanks okay so the issue at this moment that we are having is on the drone using in the hazardous area all right so if you understand the hazardous area as per iec 600 600 series or an FPA 499 or 497 hazardous area actually describe a three-dimensional area which flammable atmosphere may be expected in the normal operation so this is the the the, the example of uh, hazardous area for the downstream operation downstream processing plant or maybe ref some refineries or petrochemical complex thanks Okay, this is a, a hazardous area in the upstream operation. You can see uh, the platform itself, almost 100% is a hazardous area. Right, next. So what is the insight uh, for the drone? Okay, performing in situ inspection for hazardous without shutting down facility is very important. So that we, we, we must make sure the drone is equipped with, with the uh, uh, EX type of equipment, right? So uh, 
we want in some cases we want to 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 ex certify or attack certify uh, for the drone right so drone application is essential to minimize personal exposure so this thing can be applied when do you have any incidents or flammable release that contain also a toxic material such as the h2s so we want to send a drone first into the, the into the plant right and then we let the, the our people our operators later after we totally shut down the facilities right at this moment i believe there are few drone is non ex okay a lot of drone is non ex sorry is of only a few manufacturer is ex certified so uh some cases we make sure on this and also we we need to to make sure the drone is covered also for the combustible dust area all right i hand over back to uh mr Jose. Okay, um, hi again. So, um, in using drones, um, we do have challenges and uh, we think that um, the, the usage of drones could be um, further uh, improved and enhanced uh, with these uh, three uh, areas that, uh, <clears throat> that we identify here. The first, first one being regulations. Uh, in Malaysia, at least, uh, we, we, there are <clears throat> a few uh, regulations that we need to comply with to operate drones. <clears throat> the main one being um, from the civil aviation authorities. Uh, apart from that, we also need to get uh, permission from uh, our uh, land survey department for aerial photography because all, uh, almost all of, all of our drones uh, will have cameras on them. Uh, and we need to comply with um, or multimedia uh, and communications com uh, commissions for uh, radio co uh, communications equipment uh, and also from the, um, the police uh, they, they they do uh, background checks for for drone pilots so there are quite a few regulations that we, that we need uh, to to get to fly drones uh, not mentioning the local authorities and state governments so um, this needs to be uh, looked into to to, um, to facilitate the usage of drones uh, in, in Malaysia at least. So, um, and also the standards that being used, the standard regulations uh, by the Civil Aviation Authority, um, since uh, drone regulations are not yet uh, uh, established, uh, we, they have been started with, uh, with some regulations and directives, but uh, when there are none, uh, we need to use some of the uh, existing uh, aviation regulations, which are quite strict, which is used by uh, the, the commercial aircraft. So um, we need to, to look at the, the risk levels that is posed by drones and how we can best uh, use the drones uh, more efficiently and also uh, without um, threatening our security and privacy uh, of, the, of, the, of the people. So um, we need uh, legislation of uh, regulations and also enforcement when uh, you have legislations, but uh, no enforcement uh, is also not, uh, not, not a good way to, to, uh, to, to, do, to regulate. Okay, and um, the second one is um, technology. Uh, so current technology, uh, drone technology has improved quite uh, a lot. And uh, it's currently, at the stage where we can use uh, drones uh, quite effectively. Sorry about that. So um, current uh, limitations on technology, main one uh, being uh, as per what uh, Mr. Shuko mentioned just now is the uh, EX uh, certification where we want to use uh, if it's in oil and gas facilities 
uh, there are hazardous areas where um, there, there can be combust combustible gases or dust. So um, uh, there are not, uh, not many drones that are, have this uh, certification for operations in these areas. Uh, and also the, um, the robustness of the, 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 the technology or the, the drone itself. Uh, we don't want uh, any failures because drones uh, you know, fly uh, up in the sky. So if there is any failure, it will drop down. And uh, we we like to to have uh, safety as the main priority, and uh, the the robustness of the technology of the drone uh, must be uh, very high. And also uh, automation. When we can automate drones uh, more and more, uh, maybe we could uh, also achieve uh, autonomous uh, drones, uh, which are currently not uh, allowed by the regulation regulators. Uh, because the um, automation uh, current uh, regulations would need uh, our uh, the drones to be operated by humans uh, and not autonomous fully autonomously. Okay, so uh, technologies like um, you know detect and avoid um, uh, should be uh, enhanced to to uh, to get to the uh, autonomy of our drone operations. And the thirdly is the infrastructure. Because drones also uh, depend on uh, existing infrastructure uh, uh, for, for example, telecommunications, where to do long range uh, operations, we need uh, maybe 4G LTE network uh, and or satellite communications was to, to control the drone and communicate with the drone uh, remotely and at a distance. And also to integrate uh, for air traffic safety uh, in terms of integration with the with the uh, uh, man uh, air traffic, uh, currently uh, there's no uh, communications uh, between uh, drones, uh, man, man and unmanned aircraft. So should there be um, a, a system where uh, they can communicate and uh, manage the traffic uh, efficiently and safely? Okay. So uh, at the end, um, as our closing remarks, drones utilization has been proven to be uh, very beneficial in many use cases. Uh, we uh, explained to you uh, only three uh, today, but uh, there are more, a lot more. And uh, a lot more benefits could be reaped with advancements uh, in regulations, technology, and infrastructure. So, um, and Petronas is looking forward to uh, innovation and advancements in, in this. Uh, so it would enable safe, efficient, and sustainable operations. So that's all from us today. Thank you. Mm. you Bob. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jose, uh, Kamal, and uh, Shuka. And we, it's good to see that we have quite a number of questions coming in from the audience. So um, do, do keep those coming in. And just, just before we go to those, let, let me, can I just ask you, because I think it's very interesting that uh, you mentioned Shonas has set up a dedicated drone center, which I believe is where Jose, you, you, uh, you work. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit more about uh, why it was established, activities, and the kind of resources and expertise you have at the drone center? Yes, sure. Um, drone center, Patronas Drone Center is actually established about a year and a half ago. Uh, oh. So uh, initially, it was uh, it is seen as necessary because uh, as more and more uh, Petronas operators use drones, uh, we we are concerned whether they they are fully compliant with the with the regulations. So mm -hmm. initially, it was established just to ensure that uh, these drone operations uh, comply with the with the various regulations that I mentioned just now. So mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that uh, Petronas is uh, not um, uh, in, in any way uh, um, flouting any rules and regulations. Uh -huh. So that's the first one. But uh, as we expand, uh, we um, we look into uh, more ways to utilize drones. Uh, we look into uh, doing uh, getting our approvals uh, more efficiently. Uh, we deal and liaise with the authorities, um, uh, and as a one-stop center for Petronas, really, we we represent uh, Petronas uh, to to communicate with the authorities, mm -hmm. and and we um, we try to uh, improve the processes and ensure that uh, our operations are done uh, within the regulations and also safely. Okay, okay, great. And, and 
on that point of regulations, do the regulations you have in Malaysia, do, do they encourage the use of drones or, or do, do they kind of inhibit uh, drone, drone usage? Which, which direction are the regulations in at the moment? Yes, um, the authorities will say they, they would like uh, to, to facilitate uh, drone usage, but uh, currently, um, since the drone uh, 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 usage and uh, operations in Malaysia is, is uh, expanding quite fastly, quite, quite quickly, the, the regula regulators uh, have to keep up with, 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 uh, with the industry, with the operators. So mm -hmm. um, they, currently the regulations uh, do address uh, the, the needs of the industry. However, it can, uh, a lot can be improved in terms of uh, mm -hmm. getting permit approvals, and uh, and as those things. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Uh, I, I see one question we have here. Um, it's talking about how long. What is the maximum duration? Uh, can you hover a drone at a single location for for surveillance? And perhaps uh, allied to that is what what is the best battery life available for for a drone? Um, who who would like to take that from uh, Petronas? Yeah, I can I can take that. Um, okay. Yeah, it depends on the type of drones, uh, of course, uh, and there are there are quite a, a few in the market. Um, uh, the most popular one is the is DJI uh, drones, and uh, currently they they have drones that can uh, hover for around 40, 45 minutes. So um, I'm not uh, too sure about other drones. I'm sure there are custom drones that could uh, do more, could could uh, could uh, last longer. Uh, mm. But uh, in terms of operation requirements in uh, in Petronas, um, uh, 30 to 40 minutes is currently uh, good enough for surveillance and inspection uh, for within line of sight operations. Uh, so um, uh, we have two types of operations mainly uh, within line of sight and beyond uh, visual line of sight. So the beyond visual line of sight is currently um, uh, you can only uh, do with special permission from the authorities. So those are normally currently our special projects. So, so for the normal operations, the within line of sight where the drone does not fly far from the operator, uh, 30 to 40 minutes usually uh, is enough. Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I believe this, this um, point was perhaps mentioned during the presentation about uh, intrinsic safety, ATEX, uh, use in hazardous areas. H how is this being managed at uh, uh, Petronas? Um, All right. Uh, can you hear me, Bob? Yeah, sure. Go yeah. ahead. All right. Uh, so at this moment, uh, it's not many supplier, but we, we already found one or two. But we still we still verify whether uh, their drone is it truly ex uh, ex type or ATEX type of certification. Uh, at this moment, what we what we did. Uh, for the drone is we fly uh, outside of the hazardous area, oh, right? oh, okay. And then we you you utilize the the very uh, the high intensity camera to to to, to confirm the the, uh, the location, to confirm the source of release, and everything. Yeah, high definition mm. camera on the drone. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, this question is about uh, the flare, the flare tips. Um, um, how, how close can the drones go to monitor the, the flares? Was it was it Kamal? Mm -hmm. Was it you who brought up this point about flares? Yes, yes. Uh, it's, it? It's, it's oh. <laughs> oh, oh, sugar. It's, okay, sorry, sugar. Okay, it's, you cannot go uh, 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 around five meters to the flare. Five, me flare five meters. Yeah, five meters because. You know the radiation from the flare itself is very uh, high, high intense, uh, high radiation values. So it will some if you go uh, uh, close to the to the tip, it will damage your your drone as well, right? Because mm. the flare radiation normally is, is thirty seven kilowatt per hour, the, the the radiation strength. So it will damage it. So we have at least maximum five meters right mm, five meters okay okay thanks yeah. for that uh, uh, a question about an application uh, can, can drones be used to perform elevated thickness measurement thickness measurement would that is that possible uh, yes i can answer that uh, if uh, we do uh, 
uh, ultrasonic thickness measurement oh. using drones where oh. um, it, it is a it's a contact uh, measurement where you you put a, a ut probe on the on the drone and the drone can um, and fly at the let's say a vessel or a tank where you can measure uh, using ut the ut probe uh, on uh, the thickness of the of the tank or the, or the vessel yes this mm -hmm. is currently being done but not not um not very uh we we still uh verifying the 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 the, the quality and the the, the safety of uh, using this type of application mm -hmm. okay and the question i think this one is for for camel um about uh, the issue of cyber security is hackers uh, are we are we widening the threat landscape when we're using drones how, how do you prevent uh, uh, this kind of uh, intrusion um i think because because we 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 deploy the drones within our environment i think we we control that uh, quite closely that the drone is is actually operated by us um it's it's not it's not sending the data outside of petronas so everything is coming back to our our database in our secured uh, cloud. So I think um, and, and, and we monitor and I think we it has to follow our cybersecurity um, uh, requirements and risk assessments when when we do this uh, exercise. Well, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks. Question: When monitoring stacks or and chimneys, uh, are, is there an effect on drones be, uh, nearer nearer? near the exhaust you know the impact from the flow of flue gas on the stability of the drone is that a is that something that you need to consider when monitoring stacks and chimneys who wants to uh yes um yeah i can take that yeah. uh for 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 every operation we'll we'll, we'll do a risk assessment of uh, what the risk and hazards uh, on that uh, exist in the in the area so um for we do look at wind conditions uh, the drone would uh, normally can withstand some amount of wind, so we will check uh, what the wind condition or in the, even the wind gusts. So and also what what it can do to the um, to the mm. to the flare or the the the, the uh, flame that comes out of the of the chimney or the stack. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, the question about deploying drones in closed roof facilities rather than in the open air. Uh, are there any restrictions when you when you're moving to closed um, buildings and facilities? Yes, uh, yeah, it will seem it will go through a risk assessment, uh, and then we'll see how uh, we can uh, we can operate in this type of envir environment, whether it's fully closed or because some of the uh, most of our drones use a GPS for for navigation. So some drones were, that are designed for for closed areas do not use GPS, so that uh, we can use that for for this type of environment, uh, and also how safely we can we can uh, operate the drone in in such confined spaces. Mm, mm, okay, okay. And um, this is a question related to uh, return on investment. Um, uh, you, you've you've shown a number of uh, applications and use cases. H have you attempted to? Um, calculate the return on investment, particularly in terms of things like man hours that, that have been reduced uh, through using using drones? Um, I'm sure we, we do, um, but I don't have any numbers uh, uh, at hand. But mm. uh, yeah, uh, in terms of um, if we can avoid uh, erecting scaffoldings, uh, we can uh, avoid using um, a helicopter to do the aerial surveillance. Uh, we can avoid using uh, offshore vessels to to um, deliver items between platforms. So these are quite uh, easily using drones uh, is a lot more cost efficient. Uh, and also um, uh, in terms of uh, limiting our uh, carbon emissions, since we have a target of a net zero carbon uh, emission in uh, 2050. Yeah. Mm, mm, okay. And the deployment of drones in uh, in forested areas, and how how effective are they in in, in foggy weather? Is is that something that you also need to consider? Yes, um, <coughs> uh, like I mentioned just now, we have to uh, operate the drones uh, within visual line of, line of sight. So the pilot or operator needs to see the drone and uh, uh, see that it is uh, uh, can be operated safely. 
So if it's the if the fog uh, affects the visibility, uh, then uh, the the operations needs to be uh, to be delayed until until uh, we have clear weather. Mm, mm. I, I think I think mentioned in uh, Camel's presentation was about uh, wind speed um, in in the methane use case, if I recall. Um, so wind wind speed appears to be a key factor in drone application. C can you elaborate more more on this uh, on this issue of, of wind speed? Yeah, okay. In the in the emi uh, methane emissions uh, detection, actually, the the when the the drone detects the uh, the concentration of emissions in in that area, so we also want to know the the flow rate of that of that emission, right? How, how much is the flow rate? So to calculate the flow rate, you will need the uh, the wind speed. So that's why the drone uh, the the drone can be fitted with a wind sensor. Um, that means it gets a general wind speed of that over that area, or you can actually also manually um, uh, get the wind speed by someone actually on the on the on the field uh, performing mm -hmm. the, the the wind measurements, or through another instrument on on uh, the, uh, the side. So the data is fed to the algorithm for mm -hmm. it to generate concentration, also the flow rate at that lead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. A question about the use of drones in confined spaces or tanks. Are, are you using drones in, in those kind of uh, uh, situations? Yes, yes. Uh, we, we do use these uh, small drones that are designed for um, confined spaces. Right. They, uh, usually they, they would have uh, some guards uh, uh, around their propeller so that uh, if it hits anything, it will still be uh, okay to fly. And with some uh, bright lights to for to to get the visual uh, from the cameras. So these are drone, uh, special drones that are designed for for confined spaces. Oh, okay, that's 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 very interesting. Yeah, uh, and for internal in, for internal inspection of vessels, do do you need a tech certification uh, for that? If if it is a, a hazardous area that is uh, uh, with perhaps uh, combustible gases or, or dust, yes, it, you need uh, a tax certification. Okay, uh, and, and the person is actually asking uh, which class of certificate is required. Are you able to answer that one? I think I will. <laughs> okay, well, it's, it, it's, it's depend. Okay, for the, let's say, for the internet inspection, uh, for the storage tank, normally you, we require a zone zero because if the flammable fluid is still there, Right, you need a zone zero type of uh, uh, of equipment or certified. Right, mm. if you are, if you are empty out the vessel or equipment, then uh, and then we confirm with our guest guest tester there is no present of flammable material, then we can utilize our normal drones to to get the tank inspection. Hmm. Mm, okay. And, it, and it, that's another question. In terms of connectivity to, to drones, are you using cellular 4G or 5G for, for, for connectivity? Yes, uh, there, there are some applications that, that use uh, 4G uh, LTE because uh, like uh, we mentioned, some of the operations are, are beyond visual line of sight, that the special operations that we do obtain approval from the authorities. So, um, uh, normally, our radio coverage uh, that uh, using the normal um, 2.4 megahertz or 5.8 doesn't go uh, far. So, uh, if we want to go more than say 10 kilometers, uh, we would need some sort of other type of uh, connectivity, which is what we uh, what we use uh, the LTE network, existing LTE network. So, we need to check for the, the coverage so to ensure that we do have this uh, the coverage in this area so that we can operate. Is drone uh, at long range. Mm, mm, okay, okay, that, that, that's, that's also interesting. The, there's another kind of techno technology question about um, the use of to advance automation, improve efficiency of the actual drone operations. Are you looking into control centers to, to achieve that? At the moment, uh, no, not yet, but uh, we do foresee that this is uh, something that. Uh, that might uh, help our operations once we have uh, uh, more operations. And we are also looking uh, to uh, aspiring to have uh, self-regulation 
this is one thing uh, that we are uh, we do uh, aim to achieve someday. Uh, we are talking to the authorities uh, mm. to to obtain this, uh, but at the moment it's still uh, in planning and um, and at in terms of uh, uh, it's, a, it's a good long term goal that we like okay. to uh, self regulate our operations so that uh, we do not have to go to the authorities uh, every time we want to uh, uh, perform our operations. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. I say. Another, another question. This is one about uh, asking: Are there tethered drones? Tethered drones, and uh, why and where are they used compared to un untethered drones? Yes, there are. Uh, but currently, I'm not sure whether I think we do do not have any uh, tethered drones in our operations. But uh, we do we do uh, know the uh, the existence of tethered drones. Uh, it's usually used if uh, you don't need to go too high or too far from where you're operating and you need to uh, use the drones for a long duration. Like uh, I mentioned, uh, most of the drones uh, can only fly for 30 to 40 minutes. So the tethered mm -hmm. drones would have yeah, the power cable from the from the base. So you uh, uh, power, uh, it's not a uh, battery, it's not a limitation to the, to the flight time. So we can operate mm -hmm. uh, the drone almost indefinitely. Okay, okay. Uh, th this question I think is, uh, we, I think related to the progress you're, you're making at uh, uh, us uh, with drones, uh, he's asking, what is your view, view on drones replacing the daily operator rounds? Is, there, is that actually happening or is there a long way to go because of the limitations in drones, some of which we've, we've mentioned uh, this afternoon? Yes, uh, yeah, the, the limitations are like the regulations uh, where we can only uh, fly within line of sight. And the beyond visual line of sight is uh, currently we need uh, to go special approvals from the authorities and which takes a lot of time and effort. Um, also, um, we do see that this is something that is beneficial and uh, cost effective, uh, especially, uh, for example, our, at our offshore platforms where uh, some of the platforms are unmanned. So if you do want, want to do rounds, you need to send people uh, using boats or helicopters to these platforms to do all these um, uh, regular uh, maintenance checks and uh, rounds. Mm -hmm. So using um, sort of, um, for example, that nested drones or drones in a box concept, where you can put a drone there, station there, and you operate it remotely. Well, when the drone is doing rounds and checking everything, uh, on the platform yeah. remote area uh, without having to send people there. So this would be a very um, uh, attractive uh, type of operations for, for cost effectiveness. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, but if I may, yeah. I may uh, in yes. the example of Nestor Drone, I think that there are limitations in terms of the, the, the approvals. They do not allow you to operate during, during rain or at night. Oh, so okay. It's because of certain reasons, for example, the, because the, the, the nested drone is not IP rated, the, the box. So you don't operate during during rain. And then at oh. night, because it's, 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 only, it's only proof for, uh, what do you call it? For, for, uh, uh, that, means, that, means, that means the operator to actually monitor yes. the, the drones uh, in case the drone veers off course, you know, then the, the operator can take over and bring it back. So... Oh. But at night, because of poor visibility and such, then they don't allow you to operate at night. So these these are regulations that are, are still restricting uh, usage of drones in 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 full oil and gas operations for monitoring the plant. Oh, okay. Right. right. So just no, like, um, yeah. uh, sorry, just to add, uh, they are fully autonomous drones are currently not uh, allowed by the regulators. I think just similar to um, fully autonomous cars on the roads are still not allowed yet. So. I think they are looking at, uh, yeah, the technology needs to, to be uh, robust enough that it can be operated safely without any uh, human intervention. Mm -mm -mm. So, so no, no use of drones when in, in rain, that's what you, that's what you said, yeah. Uh, we, uh, currently, no, because, uh, uh, yeah, the drones are not, uh, not, uh, not rated for, like, uh, coming to say, uh, IP uh, for, for ingress protection. So uh, right. in, in rain, it can withstand some light rain, but not, mm. not heavy rain. But, it, so, it, but it, rains, it rains a lot in Malaysia sometimes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, okay. All right. 
uh, another uh, technical question. What type of battery do, do the industrial drones carry? What, what type of batteries do they use? Uh, mostly is the uh, lithium ion batteries, uh, oh. that rechargeable batteries, yeah. So this, uh, this is also some, uh, one of the limitations of the, of the drone uh, uh, use cases where, you know, the, the battery, uh, as drone flies, uh, you, the batteries need to be light. So if you want to increase the flight time, uh, you increase the battery size, it become heavier. So it, it, it again, reduces the, the the, the yeah, endurance of the of the drone. So uh, the, the the technology of battery technology can can if the battery technology uh, improves, it can further enhance um, the the endurance of the drone in flight. Mm -hmm. Okay. A question from Thorsten. Um, uh, how about mitigating risks resulting from manned aviation? Do you have systems in place to better support? BV LOS. I admit, I'm not sure what BV LOS is. Operations. Yes. BV LOS operations. Yes, uh, it's a beyond visual line of sight that, that I mentioned just now. Yeah. So, mm. uh, yes, uh, one of the risks of uh, why uh, the, the authorities do not allow uh, BV loss operations is uh, uh, the, the the threat of uh, of collision between manned and unmanned aircraft. Uh, as I mentioned just now, there, there's no currently there's no a system in place that uh, where the, the uh, unmanned aircraft can communicate with the manned aircraft and also the air traffic controller. So um, that there are there's a system uh, where uh, it's called unmanned traffic management system or UTM uh, that is currently uh, being developed in in many parts of the world and mm. some are in implemented. But uh, here in Malaysia, we we still don't have it uh, and. Uh, even in where the developed countries where they have it, uh, it's still at the earlier stage where there is uh, not really an integration between the, the unmanned traffic and the manned traffic. So it is still uh, uh, the one of the big risks uh, in operating drones. So currently the regulators only allow us to fly um, not more than 400 feet uh, in, at, in altitude and uh, also uh, only at certain approved areas where the, the risk of uh, 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 collision with uh, manned aircraft is, is, is very, very low. Mm, okay, okay. Thank, th thank, you, thank you for that. Uh, uh, just a, f a final question is about the use of drones in other, in other industries, countries. But for, for, for Petronas, I know, you, I know you have operations, not just in Malaysia, but overseas, uh, many, many countries overseas. Are you are you looking at drone deployments outside of Malaysia? Um, currently, um, we are looking at, at Malaysia because uh, drone operation, as uh, I said, it depends uh, quite a lot on the regulations uh, in, in in the local regulations in the country. So currently, we are we are uh, uh, dealing with the regulations in Malaysia. So each country have their own regulations. So mm -hmm. currently, Patronas Drone Center is uh, only focusing on our local uh, operations. But uh, we know that uh, in our international operations, there, there might be uh, uh, operations using drones, but at the moment, we are, it's not within our purview. Hmm. Okay. And I'll, I'll take this as the, as the final question because I'm, I'm told we're just about out of, out of time. And this person is asking uh, a question about what, are there any courses you can recommend for someone who wants to build his skill as a drone pilot or a drone technician? Uh, yes, um, if it's in Malaysia, uh, if the it also depends on when you are, where you are. If I can yeah. uh, advise on the Malaysian uh, uh, landscape, where uh, mm -hmm. the drone uh, that there is uh, cur uh, currently a professional uh, drone uh, operator uh, certification that is uh, provided by approved uh, training organizations by the the authorities. It's called uh, RCOC. Uh, remote pilot uh, certificate of uh, competency. So okay. that is a, a good uh, uh, place to start where you can get this uh, certification. And uh, once you, you have this certification, you can also uh, do uh, uh, BV loss type of operations if they, it is approved type of operations. So uh, it is something that okay. is currently all being offered in, in Malaysia. And uh, it is something that uh, I think um, a lot of people can uh, can go and uh, have this training and get certified. 
Okay, okay, that's great. Well, that's um, that's fantastic. We've had uh, so so many questions. I think it's the most number of questions we've had for one of our one of our GTC events. So it shows the great great interest there there is in drones and drone applications and drone technology and, and regulations. So that's really great. And th thanks thanks for answering those uh, all, all these questions as well as your presentations. Uh, for now, for now, just let me hand back to my ARC colleague. Uh, hi, Bob. It was a great presentation we had today with a good uh, uh, number of delegates. So we have an upcoming event uh, for DTC Asia Online. Uh, our next DTC event is scheduled on 27th April 2023. And we have our uh, ARC Advisory Group Europe Forum. It's a physical forum, which is uh, scheduled on May 15 to 17 uh, in Spain. And we have uh, an uh, Asia Forum, which is going to happen in India and Japan. After four years, we are coming for the in-person event, which is being scheduled uh, in July 12th to 13th at Bangalore. And we have a Japan in-person event, which is being scheduled on June 20th. 2023 in Tokyo, Japan. So we would like to thank Mohammad Kamil, Mohammad Arshad, Principal Engineer, Instrumentation, Instrument and uh, Control, Petronas, Shukur Mahat, Principal Process Safety, Petronas and Jose Hafiz, Manager, Drone Center, Petronas for participating in the DTC Asia webinar. We Thank Bob Gill, General Manager, ERC Advisory Group for moderating the webinar. We also like to thank all the delegates for participating in this webinar. Finally, we thank ARC Advisory Group India team for all the logistic support. Thank you all once again for having this wonderful presentation. Thank you.